Well, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Uh, go ahead and open your Bibles back to Mark, book of Mark, chapter 9 again. And today we're going to be looking at verses 22 through 29. Again, this is Jesus heals a boy possessed by an impure spirit. Uh, today we'll be continuing on mental health and our children, part B. And this video will be uploaded to YouTube as well as Rumble. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to our page, please hit the subscribe button. If you can't find us on YouTube with censorship, you can find us on Rumble at Beth Sar Shalom, Florida. And like I said, this is part B. So if you missed part A, please go back and watch it. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day. As we continue with this message, I pray that your spirit speaks through me with boldness and reaches each and every one of us. Uh, Father, I pray for our children. I pray for our grandchildren. They're constantly under attack from the evil one. We're here yet again to just shed light on, on mental health. Father, we give you all the honor and glory. Uh, I pray for angelic protection over this congregation today as we worship you, Lord. I pray all these things in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. So last week, on part A, I went over my son. My son, uh, when he was younger, he had anger issues, uh, hyperactivity, as well as a hard time concentrating in school and at home. So like I said, last week I had phone calls from his teachers um, and they suggested that I take him to see a psychologist, which I did. And after a few visits with the psychologist, he came to the diagnosis that my son had ADHD. Um, this is done, there was no blood work done, no medical testing done on my son. And he prescribed my son a psychotropic drug cocktail. So over time of him taking this drug, it began to change him. And he got just quiet over time, and it began to change his personality. So we ended up taking him off of that, that drug. Uh, last week I went over artificial food dyes. Um, being a contributing factor to some kids with behavioral, neurological, and hyperactivity issues. Uh, today we're going to look at added sugars, and then we're also going to look at medications given to treat ADHD. So I have an article. Uh, it's a lengthy one. Well, actually, the next one is. Uh, this was dated March 26, 2020. Uh, Pediatrics by the Cleveland Clinic. What to do when your child eats too much sugar. Many long-term studies link sugar to a risk of health issues later in life, including diabetes and obesity, says pediatric dietitian Jennifer Hyland, RD. That's why the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that, listen, children under two of age don't consume any added sugar at all, and kids two and older should have no more than 25 grams or six teaspoons of added sugar daily. So now I just read that children under the age of two are not recommended to have any sugar. And there's article after article of reputable sources online that caution the same. And if you can believe it or not, even CNN, they wrote an article on this as well. On the CDC's website, and I quote, you can start by offering your infant formula every two to three hours in the first days of life if your baby is getting infant formula and no breast milk. Give your baby more if he or she is showing signs of hunger. Most six to 12 month olds will need infant formula or solid foods, about four to six feedings of four ounce prepared formula a day. Similac baby formula, 
that's what my son grew up on, contains 2.5 grams of added sugar per one ounce. And they hide that in corn syrup and sucrose. So, at 16 ounces of prepared Similac formula, that equals 40 grams of sugar. That's 10 teaspoons of added sugar or the amount of sugar in a can of Coke throughout the day. Gerber Finger Food Puffs contain 3.9 grams of sugar. So that's just a couple examples. Gerber has other foods with added sugars as well. Gerber is owned by Nestle. Enfamil Instant Formula has 2.2 grams sugar per one fluid ounce. Nestle, again, Good Start Instant Formula has 4.2 grams of sugar per one fluid ounce. And that's just two examples of companies putting added sugars in the baby formula. And speaking of Nestle, baby formula, there are interesting articles on the 1977 Nestle boycott. In 1974, a report entitled The Baby Killer accused Nestle for causing illness and infant deaths in poor communities in third world countries by promoting their infant formula products at the expense of breastfeeding. The report sparked an outrage that led to an international boycott in 1977, which continues today. So let's go back to the verse we left off on last week in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 21. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. So we've been putting this in our children since they've been out of the womb, not even hours old. So now we're going to get into how bad sugars are for our children. It's an article by the Cleveland Clinic wrote March 26, 2020. This is a continuation of this article, How Bad is Sugar for a Child? Sugar may go down oh so sweet, but it's what happens is the problem. The amount of added sugar kids consistently ingest leads to big blood sugar spikes over time, explains Highland. The result, a high risk of insulin, prediabetes, and type 2 diabetes. Too much sugar can affect your child's mood, activity, and hyperactivity levels. It affects kids' behavior because their blood sugar is like a roller coaster up and down all day long, Highland points out. But keep in mind, not all sugar is created equal. Don't be afraid of fruit, grains, beans, or dairy products, even though they have sugar, those are natural sugars, says Highland. Natural sugars are necessary for a child's growth and development. The added sugars are what are the problem. So by the 1800s, the average American consumed four pounds of added sugar. The four pounds is if you're at the grocery store, it's the small bag that you buy, four pounds. Today, American adults consume an average of 60 pounds of added sugar. American kids consume over 65 pounds per year. Children are ingesting over 30 gallons of added sugars from beverages alone. The Federalist put out an article, FDA let marketers label sugar-soaked cereals as healthy for years. And big food keeps on fighting to keep it that way. Article written by Tristan Justice, a few weeks back, March 3rd, 2023. Tristan writes, 10 years after First Lady Michelle Obama, Let's Move campaign, childhood obesity has only gotten worse. At this point, it should be common sense that boxes of sugary processed cereals are the furthest one can get from a healthy breakfast. Major food manufacturers behind Fruity Pebbles, Fruit Loops, and Lucky Charms are threatening to sue so they can label their processed products healthy anyway. The FDA's current definition established in 1994 and updated in 2016 allows food companies to label their products healthy. If any amounts of total fat, saturated fat, cholesterol, and sodium are below the certain limit. The foods must also provide at least 10% of daily recommended values for vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, iron, protein, or dietary fiber. 
No limits exist, however, for added sugar. The existing regulations have allowed cereal companies to advertise boxes of chemically processed grains drenched in sugary syrups as healthy. The new guidelines, however, would put salmon on the roster of healthy products while barring the label for most cereals. Foods like cereals with more than 2.5 grams of sugar per serving would be prohibited from being labeled as healthy, according to the Business Insider. The average box of cereal contains nearly 20 grams of sugar per typical serving. In response, processed food companies that produce a variety of snacks, baked goods, pastas, and frozen pizzas are challenging the rules before they are finalized by the agency, The Intercept reported Wednesday. Among the most vocal food companies are producers of high sugar cereals, which are largely marketed to children and have been criticized as the driver of the obesity epidemic in America. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, nearly 20% of children aged 2 to 19, or 1 in 5, were categorically obese between 2017 and 2020. Researchers who analyzed data from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia published their findings in May 2021, concluded the prevalence of obesity rose among those aged 2 to 17 throughout the ineffective lockdowns that politicians claimed were necessary to combat COVID-19. Another paper from the Pennington Biomedical Research Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, in June 2021, found cases of type 2 diabetes among children doubled under lockdowns. Sales of packaged food spiked at the same time. And last week, we went over everything that they closed during COVID lockdowns. They closed our schools, our beaches, our gyms, our parks. Uh, they even canceled entire sports teams' seasons. And they had us all sitting at home watching the television. And they just had every, they put fear, they pumped fear into all of us with the cases. And then when that fear started to subside, they started pumping fear with the death counter on the TV. They got everybody sitting at home depressed. Continuing with this article, Big Pharma has responded to the unhealthy food and lifestyle crisis by proposing a cocktail of injections and surgeries. In February, researchers at London's Imperial School of Public Health concluded that processed foods could actually be deadly. After analyzing data from nearly 200,000 middle-aged adults over roughly a decade, researchers found diets high in ultra-processed foods, such as popular cereals, were linked to higher rates of cancer and mortality. According to The Intercept on Wednesday, food giants behind Fruity Pebbles and Lucky Charms argued in a joint filing to the FDA that sugar cereals pose no risks and are, in fact, beneficial to social and childhood health. The company stated they view the extremely strict guidelines as alarming because cereal is one of the most affordable nutrient wide range of options to suit different cultures, preferences, and tastes, the outlet reported. So now we have we have other countries in the world and they're taking away the cartoon advertisements on cereal boxes. And they're also putting warning labels on the amount of sugars, added sugars that are in them. They're also putting warnings against food dyes, artificial food dyes. And I remember as a kid, mom's pushing me down the aisle. And just as a kid, I gravitated towards that cartoon figure on the box and you get a free toy inside there. So that's, that's, that was my driving factor behind cereal. And it's added sugars. Me and my wife now, we've been off of added sugars for a little over a year now. And when you go and you really put a conscious effort into looking at food labels, it's they add sugar in almost everything. And I challenge you when you leave here and you're at the store next time, just to start looking at that and look at the food dyes. Um, 
I also wanted to bring up, like I said, we, we've been about a year off of having added sugars. And in the past, I used to be on two prescriptions. And I was on those for about 15 years. Took uh, five pills a day. And once, about four months after we got off of the added sugars, my body felt a little bit different. And I'm not saying this is going to happen to everybody, but I started to, to wean off of my prescriptions. And that was done through prayer. And it, it was not feeding my fleshly desires as well. Um, and I got off of those prescriptions. And right now it's been about six months since I've been off of those. In the Cleveland Clinic article, I just mentioned a while back, it stated that too much sugar can affect your child's mood, activity, hyperactivity levels. It affects your kid's behavior because their blood sugar is like a roller coaster up and down all day long. And last week, I also brought up in length, I talked about food dyes. And as little as 30 milligrams of artificial dyes can cause neurological and behavioral issues along with hyperactivity. Couple that artificial dyes with the added sugars, and we have a real problem on our hands in America. Children may be suffering from these disorders unnecessarily. Last week I went over psychology being one of the top majors in the world to take, and it's very close at being number two in our country, 0.05% away from being number two. So we're training and we're educating almost the highest number of people, and this is only getting worse. We believe that if somebody has a chemical imbalance, that they were given some type of a test, and that they have been tested the chemicals in one's body to determine that they have a chemical imbalance. And everybody's chemistry is different. They saw a psychologist and they were drugged. There's no test for mental illness. It's not a scientific or medical diagnosis. So let's look briefly at one of the psychotropic drugs prescribed to children, teenagers, that have limited attention and hyperactivity. I'm not going to touch on medications for high blood pressure or obesity because those are an actual medical diagnosis. Pulled from the American Addiction Center's website, Adderall is an addictive prescription stimulant with effects similar to meth. This is used to treat ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Because of its potency and accessibility, the risk of Adderall addiction and abuse is high. Over time, those habitually using Adderall develop a tolerance to the drug and are unable to function normally without it. So this is given to our children by psychologists, a stimulant with effects similar to meth. Meth can lead to psychotic symptoms. We need to protect our children's temple so they will not be subjected to demonic attacks from the adversary. Let's look back at Mark chapter 9. Verses 22 through 24. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. So we have this psychotropic drug that is similar to the effects with meth, and it has serious withdrawal symptoms. And these are just a few of those withdrawal symptoms. Depression, irritability, insomnia, nightmares, difficulty concentrating, anxiety, suicidal thoughts. And these are just the side effects of being addicted to this medication and not taking it or not having enough of it. Mark 9, verse 25. When Jesus saw a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. 
Adderall overdose symptoms. If someone overdoses on Adderall, they may display several symptoms of amphetamine toxicity, including panic, aggression, paranoia, hallucinations, hypertension, convulsions, and coma. In 2017, more than 2% of all drug-related overdose deaths involved prescription amphetamines such as Adderall. There are roughly 40,000 deaths every year that are directly related to psychotropic drugs. And remember that psychologists, they hide behind something called the standards of practice, and that's so they cannot be sued in a malpractice lawsuit. It's not a medical diagnosis. Mark 9, verses 26 through 29. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and stood up. And Jesus had gone indoors. His disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can only come out through prayer. Fast forward to November of 2022. Harvard Health published shortage of ADHD medicines. Adults and children who take ADHD drug Adderall may be looking for options due to short supply in some locals. Currently, there isn't reliable information about how many people are affected by the shortage. Business Insider on September 18, 2022. An Adderall shortage is forcing some people with ADHD to reduce their work responsibilities, the report says. The drug used to treat people living with ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is in short supply, with more than 60% of pharmacies struggling to obtain stock. According to a survey by the National Community Pharmacists Association. So in closing, I'd like to restart, uh, restate Chapter 9, verses 14 through 29 in its entirety to conclude this series. Jesus heals a boy with an impure spirit. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them, and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing about with them, he asked. The man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son, who was possessed by a spirit, that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. And Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet. He stood up and Jesus had gone indoors. His disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can only come out through prayer. So as we look back at Mark chapter 9, there was an impure spirit in the boy that he had to cast out. This impure spirit had been inside this boy since childhood. This is the same problem in today's times as they had to deal with back then, just a different situation. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that sugars or dyes will lead to a demonic attack. We are introducing things in our child's lives that are detrimental. The things that happened to my son, they didn't happen overnight. It happened gradually over time. So the question at hand is, do we have a mental health issue in this country 
or are we under a spiritual attack? This is a very serious issue that needs to be addressed, and it's not. There's no test for mental illness. If there is no test for mental illness, how do we even know if it's a mental illness or a spiritual problem? They are targeting our children right out of the womb, and then on from there. My son had a free-for-all eating sugars and food dyes in his diet because I didn't know any better. I worked long hours every week, and I didn't know the behavioral, neurological, hyperactivity issues directly related to sugars and food dyes. They don't teach you this type of stuff in school. Then there's no money in big pharma for healthy people or dead people. they got to have you right in the middle so that you're a customer and dependent for life on their medications. I needed to be more informed as a father to protect my family. As a country, we've gotten away from eating healthy. Our grocery stores are mostly filled with junk, make us sick over time. Whenever we shop at a grocery store, we must start learning to read the labels, nutrition labels, be more conscious of what we're putting in our bodies. Our society has been normalized with what we consume every day. In schools, our children have a free-for-all, teenagers have a free-for-all with sugary snacks, uh, drinks, sugary drinks, and vending machines throughout the day. There's nobody to look out for your child except for you. And I don't want what happened to my child to happen to yours. I took my son to see a psychologist. He was put on psychotropic drugs, which changed his personality. In both cases, it's what he consumed. One opened his soul, and the other opened his taste buds. My son didn't need a psychologist. He needed to see the great physician. Question. How can I eat what I want and still respect the temple which his Holy Spirit resides in? You can't. Before we go to the Lord in prayer, uh, I have another interesting article that came out yesterday I wanted to share. And this ties into what we discussed last week with food dyes. NPR, California could ban certain food additives due to concerns over health impacts. That says came out March 23rd, 2023 written by Ayana Archie. A California Assembly member has introduced legislation that would ban processed food items that contain potentially harmful ingredients that are used in several brands of fruit, fruit cups, chewy candies, cookies, and cakes. Under Assembly Bill 418, red dye number three, as well as titanium dioxide, potassium bromate, bromated vegetable oil, would be outlawed in the manufacturing, distribution, or sale of foods in the state. The bill cites academic studies that link those ingredients to an increased risk of cancer in animals and negative impacts to children's behavior and the immune system and the reproductive systems in rats. Californians shouldn't have to worry about the food they buy in their neighborhood grocery store. It might be dangerous additives or toxic chemicals said Assembly Member Jesse Gabriel, a Democrat. This bill would correct for a concerning lack of federal oversight and help protect our kids, public health, and safety of our food supply. And I also challenge you to, to do your own search on food dyes, and I challenge you to look at food dyes and cancer. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we glorify you. We pray that these messages over the past couple of weeks, that they are pleasing to you. We give you all the honor and glory. Father, we pray that this message, it helps shed light on a very serious issue we have going on today. We pray that more and more parents wake up and become aware of all of this. Lord, we pray for your protection over our children and our grandchildren. We always need to be on guard to protect our bodies, which are temples of the Holy Spirit. I pray all these things in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen.